In this video, we're going to be looking at how AutoStore can support Office 365 applications, particularly SharePoint, SkyDrive, and Outlook 365. We're going to be featuring mostly web capture, although this could be extended to most of the MFP capture components. We'll also be looking at two specific ways of being able to capture emails directly from your Office 365 application through IMAP and through POP3. We take a look at the configuration. Web Capture is going to support different types of forms. We have a specific form for SharePoint. <clears throat> if we look, we can see that we can specify a particular connection method for Office 365. You specify your server URL and then a particular username and password. This username and password should be somebody with site collection um, contribute rights for that particular site so they can actually be able to write files to the destination. Then you have options as far as allowing the user to browse sites at the form level, document libraries, default folders, content types, all those things, being able to make those changes dynamically within the form at submission time. Naturally, as you go through that progression, uh, the child object, so if you select site, all the document library and folder paths and content types will have to be dynamic as well. And then if you go further down, then you can you know, maybe only make content types selectable so they have uh, limited dynamic options. That'll speed up the process in terms of the amount of information that has to go back and forth bidirectionally from the form, whether it's on a web capture application or the MFP, uh, and back to the server. So it may be a little bit of trial and error to see what works best for your users and for what you're trying to accomplish within your workflow. The information from this form is passed back to the SharePoint component. We can see the configuration. We put in the static location for the server site collection and that it's using Office 365 services. The username and password are going to be static in this case as impersonation is not currently supported within a 365 environment. Dynamically, we can use the information from our web capture form for site, as well as the information gained from document library, folder, content, <clears throat> content type, as well as being able to use any of the information to rename the file that we want. You should note that um, Allow buffering should be checked off in this case, so the file can actually cache up in case you're submitting a large file, depending on your server-side settings. Now if we go back and we look at our exchange, you'll notice that in most components there's actually uh, a specific form for email, so if you look at that you might be thinking, well, I can use this for Office 365. Currently, the 365 um, web services are not supported within those forms, so you won't be able to gain access to the address books and um, the auto discovery of that server without um, some additional professional services to customize the form and uh, the backend connectivity. So currently, we're just advising using a basic form and then routing via um, send a mail recipient, which we'll take a look at here. So you can see we set up the server, add, specify the server, in this case smtp.office365.com. It runs over port 25, but in this case we're actually requiring a secure connection and that it requires authentication. So again, you're going to specify that username and password to make sure that it's encrypted. Under the message, we're going to use, in this case, our username for both the from and the to. We're just going to do a simple send to me application. I've just hard-coded the subject and body. But you can make these dynamic either from the reserved and special set tags that are available from any of your RTs, or if you added additional field values at the time of scan or submission.
Now, SkyDrive Pro is a subsection within the Office 365 SharePoint site, and really it just acts as a My Site. What you can see here is a separate URL that links back to the personal address for that particular user. So again, we're specifying the username and the password. Now at a design time, what you'd be able to do uh, would be using uh, variable values for the username and the password. Um, so you can see we can check off a box here to obtain the password via RRT so that this could be a dynamic. You'll see within the document tab we actually have all the same information as we did in our previous SharePoint 365 configuration. While we don't have the browsing capability in this instance, since we're using a basic form, we're using just static locations for documents the folder it's going to, the content type. We're renaming the document based on the file name and placing a counter, but other than that, everything else is static. This is more of a send to me application, similar to the email. Now the other two options that we're going to demonstrate in this configuration is for IMAP capture. As you can see, we set up a connection to our 365 server. So we just give it a name, and that name can, is completely arbitrary. You can name it whatever you want. And you specify the server you're connecting to. For the email applications, outlook.office365.com is going to be your server, and your corresponding username and password for that account. And the port number, in this case, is over SSL uh, port 993. And then you can set up an email class, and that class can be really for any criteria that you want. I set up just a very simple test looking at a subject line of the word test to be able to pull attachments from those emails, mark them as read, and then process them and send them out to a local folder location. Similarly for POP3, you can set server outlook.office365.com, username and password, Again, over SSL, but this time the port is 995. Now let's take a look at the web capture interface for these three forms. So in this case, we're going to show a custom authentication where I'm just typing in my user and logging into the server. Select each one of my forms. So I'll go ahead and start with SharePoint 365. Then I have the option of selecting my site, document, library, folder, path, content, type, title. And then I've added an additional field option for file format so I can be able to alter the document that I'm uploading. So in this case, let's just leave it at the current site, document, library, folder, path. I'll select a content type. Get a title. I'll just maintain the format. Add a file. I'll just select a here we can see that it's checking against the SharePoint server, 
before making the connection, making the connection, and then uploading the document. Here we can see our file, uploaded about a minute ago. We can open that up. And validate the image. Look at SkyDrive Pro. Again, this is more of a send to me capability. Let's go ahead and make a searchable PDF. Let's see, in this case, the document's being OCR'd. Since we selected searchable PDF, Once again, it's checking against the 365 server and uploading the document. And here we can see our document, and it's been uploaded as a PDF. Now, Exchange 365, again, as a send to me application, you could have standard email fields here for two CC, BCC, subject, message, any of those different types of things, but I'm just going to do a simple send to me. Let's say I wanted to create a PDF archive. that we've completed submission, it's going to OCR the document and route that out through the 365 Outlook server. And we can see the result. Go to our Outlook web app. Here it just came in, NSI demos, test. And go back and we check. And it's already been captured by the POP3 component. There you have our document.
So you can see that currently with AutoStore, you have a number of different ways of integrating with Office 365, both in Ascend to and Capture from capability.